Angela. Angela, yep. Okay, I'm here with Angela. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. So uh, you're here to support the uh, Haiti uh, outreach? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I absolutely am. You know, it's funny because I have a lot of friends who come to the Hamptons uh, for the weekends and stuff, and they've been asking me to come, not had time, but for something like this, I definitely have time. So it beats going to the beach. Okay, why, 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 why this? I'll tell you why, because, you know, I think it's fine to raise a lot of media awareness when something happens, be it Haiti or tsunami, but I think it's, it's like a one-hour wonder, one-hit wonder, like, once something happens after a month or two, it's just, it dies down. And I think it's amazing, 18 months later, to still call attention to the fact, because it's not out of sight, out of mind. This is a time when the shock has worn off and people are getting back on their feet and you need to sustain it. it the work is not over. I mean, we saw how Japan was in the headlines and now, like, what? That doesn't mean there's still, like, 15,000 people unaccounted for, so many displaced, so we got to keep going until people are back on their feet. You have the same philosophy, in essence, worldwide, because, you know, many countries, I have the country you come from, uh, there's so much uh, difficulties, especially for those uh, possibly who might not even have a glass of water today. A hundred percent. And I was just actually having a discussion with a, a gentleman here from Somalia, and it's it's very interesting how some parts of the world can be very insulated to what's going on. I read an amazing quote by Bill Gates, which is like, you know, people get very upset if uh, 75 people die in an airplane accident, but not so many people are upset when people are dying every day of malaria or not having drinking water like you mentioned. And um, it's really time to understand that we're all in it together and to understand what's going on in Egypt, the Ivory Coast, even India. Like my, my husband and I experienced some crazy, crazy things that have totally redetermined our effort to get involved and make a difference, one person at a time. You unfortunately had a very difficult situation happen to you, right? Excellent. Very. And, you know, it's interesting because in Buddhism and Christianity, like Buddhism says you can change any poison into medicine or the cross you often have to bear is the greatest thing that could happen. Um, my husband and I got married in October. And on the last day, uh, you know, India still being a third world country, so much potential. I hope they tap into it. But right now, uh, things can be a bit tough and the vendors... Uh, decided they wanted to extort money so they held my husband and I for 16 hours at gunpoint and it was a defining moment for sure defining in the sense of how fragile life is defining in what way in every single way like it when when something like that happens right on the last day of your wedding you you strip away to the core what is important like it, you just it's it's life-altering um, for 16 hours we're sitting there and it's like it's not even the people themselves that are doing that. It's so easy to play a blame game, but it's what would force them to that desperation? What is going on in the bigger picture? It's micro, macro. Um, and you can either feel sorry and be a victim, and make no mistake, there have been many nights full of tears, but we are doing our best to, like, you know, we're going to uh, found an anti-corruption trust and, you know, help causes like this and, and make a difference. And the most important thing is, to raise a voice. So many people are like, forget about it, or pretend you didn't see it, or pretend it didn't happen, but that's not the way. That's as good as condoning it, so. I agree with you. Plus, you have to have, also have a very positive attitude of life. You have to. This unfortunate situation is not the norm, right? And that it's, most of the world is, is kind. I absolutely agree. It's a uh, uh, glass half full or half empty, and your attitude and your perception of things determines where you're going to go and what you're going to do. So I'm not going to feel a victim, but I want to empower myself and others. And you're absolutely right. Um, for every example like that, there's so much kindness in the world. Okay, last question. What's good news for you? What's good news for me? Well, looks like uh, we're going to be moving to Malaysia in September. And I'm looking forward to Fashion Week in September and signing some new contracts with the modeling. And I got into my dream program for my PhD in international psychology. So I'm excited. Beautiful. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm so appreciative of you giving me a chance to talk about what happened. Thank you. Yeah, that's healing. I, uh...